Hi, uh, my name is Ken McCarthy. I've been an athlete for as long as I can remember. And uh, I've got these Nike shoes here, uh, which gave me a wicked case of uh, plantar fasciitis. That's incredible pain in the bottom of your heels. I read a book called Born to Run, and I realized the source of my problem. I stopped wearing these things, and within a week, I was completely healed. But that's not why I'm pissed off at Nike. I'm pissed off at Nike because they use slave labor. And my friend Jim Keaty brought me up to date. Now, this is not in the news anymore. We, we probably have too many problems in the news right now to pay attention. But these are made by people who are being worked as slaves. They're paid a dollar a day. They're brutalized if they try to organize themselves uh, into labor unions. And it's a freaking disgrace. So I'm going to send this toxic waste, this Nike products, including these Nike gloves, because I cannot bear to see the Nike logo anymore. As far as I'm concerned, it's like having a swash stick in my house, and I'm not going to have it. And I'm not even going to put them in my local dump, because why should my town have to deal with this crap? So this is going right back to uh, Mr. Phil Knight, uh, you know, the founder of uh, the great slave empire of the 21st century. And uh, Nike can dispose of their own products at their own expense. So in they go to the box. Very easy to do. You can do this too at home. Uh, we'll put the address of where to send your uh, Nike garbage. Um, and maybe Nike will get the message that we're not interested in inferior products and we're not interested in slave labor. And, and, and at the end of this, I want to show you a video of Phil Knight so you can see what this guy is all about. That's what put me over the edge. Um, check out the video. Good nice to meet you finally. Yeah. Listen, um, I was hoping we could set up some time and we could talk. I'm really concerned about the workforce in Indonesia. You know, I spent the summer there living with them and living on the wages that are paid to the factory workers. You worried about that? Yeah. Okay, well, why don't you call my secretary? Let's see that. I, I did. I called Lisa last week. I called Beta. I called Dusty. I called Brad Feigl. I called Amanda. You're going to have to talk to somebody else. Maybe we're going to talk to Dusty Kid. I mean, you're the guy, the buck stops with you, right? Yeah, it doesn't start with me, though. I know, but I mean, I don't know who else to talk to. I tried. That's the kid. He doesn't want to talk to me. Well, then I, I guess you're going to get through that. But you're the man. I mean, thank you. <laughs> you're the man that, that needs to. I appreciate your concern, but I'm having lunch with a friend, and I'm going to talk about it. I apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I mean, I've come all the way from New Jersey to talk to you about this. Well, I'm not talking to you. I got stonewalled at, at every town. You know, the workers had asked of me that I try to bring you back to Indonesia to meet them in their homes, not not in, you know, the office in Jakarta. Do you understand no? You just got to know. I'm not going to talk to you about it. I'm walking down this dirt path into this village and I see this massive pile of scrap shoe rubber that I later learned came from one of Nike's factories and piles like that get dumped there all the time and the end result of these piles is that they get burned in that village in the big open space where kids play and the burning fumes I learned from the company that designs Nike shoe rubber will give off toxins and carcinogens. Kids are paying the price and they're the ones with the chest infections, and they're the ones that are gonna develop cancer. The local mafia certainly works in conjunction with these factory bosses. The factory bosses are, some of them are just brutal, ruthless, hired muscle to keep workers in line. And we met with one worker, Giulianto. He told us because he was union organized and he was trying to form an independent union. He was threatened at gunpoint. He had his house ransacked. He was given death threats and he had to flee back to his home village because, you know, in fear of his life. This is literally a life and death issue. And this happens at all the factories. You know, every worker that we talk to, there's this, struggled with this fear, this culture of fear that just permeates the air that yeah, they, they want to tell you the truth and try and fight for their rights, but they also like want their kids to have a father or a mother. They're dealing every day with the threat of losing their lives for doing this kind of work. I mean, they show tremendous courage in light of that. Do you understand no? You just got to know.